Please welcome President and COO of Sony North America, Mike Fasulo. Welcome everyone here in New York City and also online to Sony's digital imaging press briefing on the eve of 2017 Photo Plus Expo. I'm Mike Fasulo, President of Sony Electronics, and I'm very excited to be here today, and even more so to be here with my colleagues from North America and our headquarters in Tokyo, Japan, to introduce yet another series of groundbreaking announcements in the world of photography. At Sony, we're constantly talking about the customer experience, about innovation, and about kondo. Or, how do we make customers say, wow? And Sony's imaging division delivers on that promise perfectly by providing tools that allow photographers the ability to express their creativity and capture those moments that make others say wow. And as I've said prior, customers are responding. In April, I stood on stage here in New York City to launch the A9. And today, I'm very pleased to report that in fact, the A9 is the number one professional interchangeable lens camera since its launch. And <laughs> And don't take my word for it, that comes straight out of the market research from NPD. So today, we're here to share a couple of new revolutionary products, which are world's first, world's best, and world's fastest. Again, today we introduce two new products, and we're going to announce a third product that we will deliver in the summer of 2018 that are world's first, world's best, and world's fastest. After the product announcements, you will then hear from a panel of a great group of professional photographers who have had our new products for a couple of weeks now. And they're going to share with you their personal and professional experiences and, of course, the amazing work that they do. Thank you for being here. I guarantee you that panel and that session will not only be exciting, but it will be one to remember and one that will be very special. Lastly, for those of you here in the room and here in New York City, you'll have a chance to see, touch, and feel the power of Sony innovation from these new products right next door. So to kick things off, please join me in welcoming my friend, a brilliant engineer, the founder of G-Series Lens and G-Master Series Lens, Senior, Dig Senior General Manager, Digital Imaging Products, Yaz Nagata. Nagata-san. Thank you, Mike. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for attending this event. I'm Yaz Nagata from Sony Imaging Products and Solutions. Sony Imaging Products and Solutions is responsible for consumer camera business, solution business, and medical business at Sony. We aim to maximize the product value for every customer by fulfilling imaging platform, which includes a variety of technologies from light source to display. I'm a senior general manager at the Digital Imaging Group, which handles digital cameras, lenses, and camcorders. First, let's, let's look at the market in industry, the digital imaging market industry. So the left chart shows the continued decline of worldwide industry of digital imaging products, including still and video cameras. The portion colored in dark blue 
is the interchangeable lens cameras and lenses. This year, 50% of this portion is expected to be occupied by full-frame products. The charts on the right show Sony's full-frame business has been rapidly increasing in both bodies and lenses. Despite the huge impact of the Kumamoto earthquake, we have achieved continuous growth during the last several years. This success has been supported by many professionals worldwide. Today, the number of professionals who are using Sony equipment continues to grow. Their voice has been critical to our product development, which leads to new innovation. And today, deliver new imaging experiences which have never existed before. With this vision, we have kept creating innovative products over the past years. And today, we introduce two new innovative products, a camera and a lens. We have developed these models to create the future of imaging with our customers. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to introduce Alpha 7R Mark III. <laughs> Along with 24105 F4G lens. Thank you. Before moving on to the details of those models, we have another announcement. We are developing a long-awaited telephoto zoom, telephoto prime lens, 400 millimeter f 2.8 G master. Coming in summer next year. Thank you. I'd like to share with you the messages we received from two world famous sports photographers in regard to this development Bob Martin and Nick Diderick. A sports photographer needs long lenses. It's going to be smaller and lighter, and I think Sony's the only one that can produce something like that right now. For me, this is the chance to have the advantage that I've got in the short lenses for my 
mainstream work. So this is a really big stepping stone for me. I've been excited to shoot Sony since I first got into my hands. The, the 400 is going to take me to another level of excitement. For a sports photographer, a 400 8 is your standard lens. It's the lens you will use most of the time. G Master Lenses has pretty much set the high bar for autofocus and sharpness performance in lenses. And with this 400 8 coming out, if it's as fast and sharp as the current lineup of G Masters, is uh, going to be stunning. The ability to use the IAF is really important. It'll be better AF than my previous 400 8 this 400mm will enable this camera to be used by mainstream sports photographers working for papers all over the world. The new 400 to 8 coupled with the A9 means there's no more compromises for me in sports photography. Thank you. Thank you. Detailed specifications are uh, to be announced at a later date. You're going to love it. <laughs> now, let's get back to the Alpha 7R Mark III and the 24105G lens. I'd like to pass on to my friend, Neil, for more details about those products. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Nagata-san. Morning, everyone. We certainly have exciting products to talk about. But first, let me share with you some updates about the US market. We've been investing heavily to build up our alpha full-frame lens lineup. And in just four short years, since 2013, Sony has introduced a total of 27 new full-frame E-mount lenses. 27. This is at a rate of one lens every other month. It's an unprecedented level of development. And we're very thankful for all the support you have shown us towards this investment. And this can be seen in the continued growth. While the rest of the market struggles to remain flat this year, our lens business is up 50% year over year. Next. Let's look at the camera business, full frame. Here, the growth is equally staggering. We're up 57% year over year compared to the rest of the market that is down 7%. And with all of this growth, I'm really proud to share with you that Sony maintains the number two position in full frame cameras. And to be clear, this includes everything through September and includes all of the recent DSLR announcements. Thank you. But today, we're here to talk about the A7R Mark III. This camera pushes the boundaries of what is possible in so many ways, and again, shows us the future of the true digital age. If I was gonna sum this up it's all about the unprecedented combination of image quality and speed. First, from an image quality perspective, the camera can capture what has never been done before. We start with our 42 megapixel back illuminated Exmor R CMOS image sensor, and then building on the success of the award-winning Alpha 7R Mark II, we've added an additional stop of dynamic range for an impressive 15 stops, and improving sensitivity with a wider native ISO range. But we also have a new tool when talking about image quality, pixel shift multi-shooting. This is designed for capturing still life in architecture. It allows you to capture four raw images, each shifted by one pixel all totaling 169 million pixels of information, eliminating the need for Bayer interpolation. 
This creates an image of, that is breathtaking with color accuracy and lifelike resolution never before seen. You can see for yourself what the results. Color accuracy and perceived resolution beyond that of any single frame capture can produce. And beyond just image superiority, the Alpha 7R Mark III sets a new standard for combining quality and speed. With 10 frames per second continuous shooting, you can choose between a focal plane shutter or a completely silent electronic shutter. With up to 76 raw image buffer capacity, it captures the moment with unmatched quality. With the new, newly de developed low vibration focal plane shutter, the Alpha 7R Mark III can capture moments with high speed studio strobes never before possible. Such as this shot, 42 megapixels at 10 frames per second with high speed profoto lighting. Let me show you behind the scenes of how this was done. As you can see with the video clip, all the elements of the shot are frozen in time by the Alpha 7R Mark III's unique capabilities. And speed also relates to the dramatic improvement in autofocus performance. With the Alpha 7R Mark III, we're able to use the Alpha 9 algorithms that have been optimized for this camera to provide a quantum leap in AF performance. Enhanced IAF performance has doubled when comparing it to A7R Mark II. And with the autofocus works reliably down to minus three EV. And the Alpha 7R Mark III is not just an amazing still camera, it's equally impressive as a video camera. The A7R Mark III provides full pixel readout in both full frame and Super 35 format, and when using it in Super 35 mode, the camera oversamples 5K of data without pixel binning. It also supports S-Log3 and can capture HLG for an instant HDR workflow. And listening to our customers' needs is always at the forefront of our minds. And with your feedback, we're able to build so many of the features that, with the, that were built into the acclaimed Alpha 9 camera. Designed for the professional, the Alpha 7R Mark III provides high reliability and operability in a compact body. From the dual card slot and the inclusion of the Z battery that provides double the capacity, and even the inclusion of both a USB Type-C and micro USB port, that's perfect for high-speed tethering while externally powering the camera. The Alpha 7R Mark III is truly a marvel, and this camera will be available next month for $3,200 in the US and $4,000 in Canada, and pre-orders start tomorrow. And today, we're also proud to share with you our latest addition to the full-frame lineup in lenses, the FE24105 F4G. It's designed to be a perfect match for our alpha full frame camera lineup. Great image quality, not only in the center, it also performs beautifully corner to corner throughout the entire zoom range. And a signature of our entire lineup, this lens is compact and lightweight. It also includes a variety of technology that allows amazing and quiet AF performance that makes it perfect for both still and video applications. As you can see in the highlighted areas, this lens performs excellent corner to corner. And the high resolution is not only achieved at the wide angle, but throughout the entire zoom range. The MTF charts show the excellent image quality from center to corner, from wide to telephoto. This lens is also quite compact and weighs only 663 grams. That is the lightest in its class. We expect it to be very popular with a wide range of people because of the mobility and wide coverage from 24 millimeters all the way up to 105. This lens adopts Sony's unique direct drive SSM technology which features fast, precise, and quiet AF. Combined with the F4 constant aperture, this lens is ideal for both still and video applications. 
And just like the Alpha 7R Mark III, this lens will be available next month for $1,300 in the US and $1,700 in Canada. And just like the Alpha 7R Mark III, pre-orders also begin tomorrow. So I am so happy to have been able to share with you these great innovations. The entire team has put so much effort in allowing us to launch these incredible tools that provide photographers and videographers the power to create like never before. On that note, it's my pleasure to introduce an impressive panel of professionals that have been using these products, putting them through their paces, and really pushing them to the absolute limits. To, to lead this panel, I'd like to bring up Chris Robinson, who's Editor-in-Chief of Alpha Universe. Let's all welcome Chris and our panel to the stage. Thanks very much, Neil. And welcome, everybody. I'm Chris Robinson, editor of Alpha Universe. And I'm very happy to be here, very excited. And before we begin, I'd like to ask our panel to introduce themselves. My name is Brooke Shaden. I'm a fine art photographer. And I specialize in self-portraiture with a painterly look. Hey, guys. I'm Brian Smith. I'm a celebrity portrait photographer from Miami Beach. Hi, everyone. My name is Mira Ko, and I've been a professional photographer about 15 years, covering high-end weddings, family portrait, travel, and a Disney show for moms who want to take photos of their kids. Hey, I'm Chris Burkhardt. I'm an adventure and landscape photographer based in California, and my, my travel takes me pretty much around the globe, capturing everything from action sports to catalog shoots and, and what have you. And I'm Mark Weir. I'm the technology manager for Sony Digital Imaging. Great. So I'd like to kick it off. Chris, I'd like to ask you, when you heard about this camera, you did a special project with it. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how the camera worked out for you? Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I was like, I'm going to take this thing and just literally run it into the ground. I'm going to put it through the paces because the truth of the matter is if the camera can't perform in the conditions that I want to shoot in, then it's not really worth it you know, to, to use it. So I knew from using the A9 that it was just an amazing piece of equipment, right? And building upon that body, I was hoping that this autofocus, that the you know, improved you know, burst rate and everything was going to really live up to the expectations. We shot it in sub-zero temperatures. We shot in an open cockpit plane at, at 12,000 feet, uh, dust storm, everything you can imagine. And we used Southern Utah as kind of our backdrop to do this. And it, it performed, it, it blew away my expectations. Um, you know, things that aren't even really mentioned, like just the, the overall weather sealing of the camera was incredible. The high ISO sensitivity, along with a lot of the features we're going to talk about today. And so the A7R2 has been your real workhorse. Yeah, I mean, now. the A7R2 is, is what I pick up when I'm shooting, you know, a, a wide range of activities. The one kind of um, time that I've, I've always had that, uh, just that urge to, you know, bring along an, an A6500 or an A9 is when when I need to shoot action sports and I really need that fast focus. And what ended up happening was with this, I was like, two things need to perform well. The autofocus can't fail. I'm shooting stuff that sometimes is high risk. When we shot base jumpers in Moab, Utah, and there's literally a, uh, a moment where if you drop a frame or if something happens, your buffer runs out, that's it. There's not a repeat situation. So I trust these cameras and, and the, the people that we're working with trust the cameras too. So that was a really big deal to, to see this thing buffer, what is it, 67 frame buffer or 76 frame buffer. It was amazing. I was hammering the shutter down and never even having to worry that it was going to drop focus or anything. Um, the 10 frames a second as well performed beautifully. You know, I was shooting a lot of situations where I had objects moving towards me. You know, the most challenging autofocus situation at maybe 60, 70 miles an hour. And it was just performing really beautifully there. Opening up to the rest of the panel, um, we're just talking about the, the 10 frames per second. And Brian and Mira, both you guys shoot a lot of, a lot of people. I should rephrase that. Both you guys photograph a lot of people. Yes. <laughs> and um, that, that 10 frames per second, and, um, and especially, Brian, the mechanical shutter with this camera is going to be important right. to you. Yeah, because I usually shoot with strobe. And so the mechanical shutter is important because you can sync it up with Profoto Flash. So I did a studio shoot and used Profoto Air Remote for Sony along with the uh, Profoto D2s. And it functioned flawlessly at 10 frames a second. So I'm, portrait photography is really all about capturing the moment. Mm -hmm. And it kind of lets you capture the moments between the moments, which is pretty cool. 
Plus, as a portrait photographer, if I get sent out by sports magazine to photograph an athlete, they typically want not just a portrait, but they want some action in there too. Being able to do both with one camera and being able to shoot it with strobe or existing light is huge. Yeah. And a lot of those decisive moments, you know, Mirai, you do a lot of weddings and, of course, family mm -hmm. photography, where that's going to be a big deal. Absolutely. I think being able to track a toddler <laughs> that's running or a bride that is spinning in her dress, you just want to know that that autofocus is tracking with their, not only their face, their eye, the IAF. And I think what really blew me away was that not only are we shooting 10 frames a second in continuous shooting mode, but every single one of those frames is refocusing, refocusing. And so when I brought it back into post, and I know we were all talking about this yesterday, how blown away we were, I couldn't believe just how like tack sharp every single little detail blown up big. It's like every, it's so consistent. And that's the thing, the A7R2, I, you know, has been my workhorse and I love, but uh, it's sometimes that, you know, continuous shooting mode, you know, it just like starts to stall on you. And this one, the A7R3, I, I mean, it was ahead of me the whole time, so. When I was looking at some of the photographs that you had taken with this camera prior to its release, um, you had a couple of wedding pictures and then you had a whole lot of families and there yeah. were some baby pictures, which made me think, we're using the, the silent shutter. Yes, so I did this photo shoot last weekend, uh, Richmond, Virginia. I was working with a baby and so excited, a uh, little six month old guy. And we started the shoot and within like the first, I don't know, 10 minutes, I could tell the baby was getting stressed because of the sound of the shutter. And typically I don't really want to go to silent shooting mode because of the sacrifices they give, you know, I have to let go of. But the A7R3, you know, we got this, all got this cryptic email that, you you guys, there's a camera we want you to try and it's gonna blow your mind and the silent shooting mode is one of those. And it was amazing, I was able to switch to silent mode and the baby was able to settle back into mom to re-engage with that connection, that shoot. And uh, I, can't, I can't say enough about it. I mean, obviously it's great for weddings with ceremonies, but to be able to not uh, suffer any quality or performance and have the silent mode is amazing. That's a, that was a huge feature for me too. I shot the entire week in silent mode and it was just a, it was a seamless shooting experience. You know, you're more present. You're more there when you're shooting. You're not having to look and, and you know, less chimping, you know, it's just kind of this like, I don't know, it's a little mm -hmm. more, um, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's one of the coolest aspects about the small lightweight package of a mirrorless system like this is that when you can trust the autofocus and you can trust your buffer and you know that the silent shooting is working, it's like, you can just focus on being there. Yeah. You know? yeah. You know, Brooke, I want to ask you about that because he was just mentioning, you know, some of the autofocus capabilities. You do a lot of self-portraiture. I do. And that's going to be a big deal for you because it's not like you have someone there. Right. I shoot completely by myself. So when I go out to take a photo, it's because I want to be alone. So for me, <laughs> autofocus and the ability to get myself sharp is not only paramount because you need sharp photos, but because the experience for me as an artist is one where I don't want to think about the technique. I just want, I want my camera to think about my business for me and do the mm. work so that when I get into post and I create an image, it's going to sell itself. So the autofocus for me is like, it, it was almost a mind blowing experience because I often <coughs> am shooting in manual mode putting a stool in place or an extra tripod, just trying to get focused and hoping that something works because I'm never in the mood to worry about it. And this was the actual first shoot that I've ever done where I didn't worry about it and it worked. <laughs> and that was kind of amazing for me. You know, in a lot of your photos I find to be you know, very moody and very dark. Mm -hmm. um, dynamic range is gonna be a big deal. Mm -hmm a super big deal. And the thing is that for a lot of people where maybe you consider yourself more of an artist than a photographer, however you wanna put it, there's a sense of wanting to create a painterly image in that you wanna build layer upon layer so that you can build your color up, you can build your lighting up over the series of many, many different layers maybe in Photoshop. And that's my process, so I'm creating on average about 100 layers in Photoshop where I'm making it darker and then changing my mind and making it brighter and then changing my mind and making it darker. And I was amazed. I was amazed at how I could make it darker and then change my mind and make it lighter and it was okay. It all worked out. Hmm. You know, 
Mark, I'd like to ask you, you've seen a lot of camera introductions. I think everybody here knows that your nickname is The Professor. Are you saying something about my age, Chris? Come on. <laughs> Not yet. Just your experience. <laughs> um, this camera has some really unique capabilities. Can you talk about the, the pixel shift a little bit and, and what that is and how it works? Yeah, um, obviously a lot of learning that we've had just over the last two years has gone into A7R Mark III and two years is pretty much forever in camera development these days. And uh, one of the things that we were able to do is to take the huge performance of the sensor and take it up a notch um, really with uh, things that you can really only do with a digital camera. Um, moving the image sensor by uh, four steps in uh, left, right, top, and bottom in, with sub-micron precision to be able to capture four raw frames, 170 million pixels, as Neil was mentioning. Um, that way we can eliminate uh, color aliasing, uh, demosaicing algorithms, all the kinds of color um, uh, inaccuracies that are required by Bayer filters that have been that way since the beginning. And uh, we can deliver images of perceptual realism and perceptual resolution that are really quite striking. And it's one of the things that we're particularly proud of in A7R Mark III because it allows photographers to capture images that really weren't possible before. And that's really the theme of the camera is to be able to go beyond the limits um, by using the technology. And they kind of down, down sold the, the sensor. You know, you, as a photographer, what happens is we, we see this, you know, this number, the megapixels, and we think that, oh, if there's not an improvement in megapixels, then they didn't change much. It's totally inaccurate. You know, only now are they fully being able to realize what this sensor can do. I mean, the A7R2 sensor was amazing. Imagine looking through the viewfinder and going into, you know, Lightroom and editing and, and seeing like a totally new level of, of um, you know, of color definition. It's, it's incredible. Even looking through yeah. the viewfinder, we were all blown away equally. Yeah. And like, we didn't want to say anything because we didn't really know the technical specifications. We were like, this thing is a huge improvement. Color accuracy, pixel definition. I mean, it, it's, it's really mind blowing to me. Just being able to, you know, post process. There's no sacrifice in the shadows or the highlights. Yeah. I'm shooting in super harsh conditions. Almost every day was first light into the sun, end of the day, dark shadows you have this massive latitude of where you can take your photographs. I can only imagine for your fine artwork, you know, being able to be like, oh, well, I can choose from this massive range. And that, that's really was such an exciting thing for me to just go into, you know, editing program and be like, I can take this wherever I want to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that's a huge point because a lot of people, it's like, it's the same 42.4 megapixel yeah. sensor, but it's a completely new engine yeah. yes. running the car. So yeah. it's sort of like taking a street street car and turning it into a stock car. Right, exactly. It's, you know, the same thing, but it's not. Totally. You know, we had a chance to talk yesterday, all of us, and to a person, every one of you had mentioned that <clears throat> even though this was the same sensor, the image quality was dramatically different from the yeah. A7R2. Yeah. And, and actually, Mark, I'd like to ask you a little bit about how that came about. Well, that's really the fun part of this, um, uh, to take the devices and then to take learnings from recent camera introductions, particularly A9, and uh, to put together the different parts of the camera to yield a whole new level of performance. And most importantly, to watch what photographers can do with it. And in the case of A7R Mark III, our team uh, essentially took the camera and you, you know, it really looks like an A7R Mark III. It, it's the same size, the same shape. I mean, it's, it's almost indistinguishable. But just about every part of it is different on the inside, which is hard to grasp. But probably the biggest one was uh, from the sensor on down, the entire imaging pipeline was changed. Not only the circuit design, but also the image processor and even the CPU of the camera to really um, extract from the sensor its capabilities that were really camera technology wasn't able to do two years ago when we created A7R Mark II. So uh, not only the speed, but also the processing um, and the, uh, using the dynamic range by lowering the noise floor to increase the dynamic range and allowing the processor to, um, to really uh, dig through all of uh, the data that's coming off of the sensor to yield image quality that we really had never been able to, to realize. And then throw on top of that, the advances in the focusing system, and then the overall advances in the operability to make a camera that in your hands, it's, oh, well, this is what I've been using for a couple of years. <laughs> and then to yield that completely new experience and to hear it from the photographers who have used it is probably the most exciting part for us. Well, it's intuitive, yeah. you know, at the joystick, those little features when the A9 came out, everybody was just like, 
when is this gonna be in the AC, you know, the battery life, all those little things. It, it makes for that seamless shooting experience. You, you hold it and you just, everything you need is within this one little area, which is a really great experience when you're in harsh conditions. Yeah, and, and that, that usability, I think, is just a, a really big deal. And, and Brian, I know you were shooting a lot with the enhanced IAF. Right. In, yeah, IAF is nothing new for Sony cameras. They've had it for a while. It just keeps getting better. And um, A9 took it to a new level, and I think actually uh, A7 Mark III takes it a step above that, where the enhanced IAF is absolutely incredible. So one thing, I know there's a lot of converts out there who've come over from um, the other brands, and they've all been begging for that joystick, <coughs> which is there, but you know, don't look at just trying to make this camera work like your old DSLR. It can do so much that your DSLR couldn't. And for a portrait shoot, being able to enable IAF that's really smart, like it figures to focus on the near eye, not the back focus on the back eye. Um, and it works incredibly fast now. So I just, I just have it um, programmed to my focus hold button. So on an FE lens, press that and it enables IAF whenever I want it. You know, when we were talking yesterday, Mira, you had mentioned that this was really the, the first professional A7 series camera. Yeah. And like, what were some of the features that made it just feel like, like that? So the biggest one for me, I mean, obviously dynamic range is huge for my work. I'm in natural light. And so uh, just like Chris was talking about, except with uh, babies and families, I'm using those deep shadows and highlights to add, accentuate drama. But can I just tell you that I love how big the battery is? Because <laughs> I don't know, I don't know about anybody else, but when I was shooting with the A7R2, I in one shoot would go through maybe like two batteries, and uh, and it's just it's disruptive. You lose that connection with your subject. You don't want to have to put a new battery in. So for me to do like a two-hour shoot and end this and look and see that I have 88% battery life left, I'm like. Okay, now I. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the, now we're on to something. Yeah. It was the, the Achilles the heel. The Achilles heel of the <laughs> yeah. A7R2 yeah. was that battery. The, sure. the one thing in the specs that definitely was not right is Sony's being very conservative when they say a 2.2 times the battery life. It's, I shot over 4,000 frames of RAW plus JPEG, on a single battery. Yeah. I don't think I ever got 2,000 frames on a W battery. <laughs> so, it's a yeah. whole lot more than 2.2 yeah. .2 times. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know. Brooke, you and I have talked before about how you're kind of a minimalist yeah. when it comes to your gear. You're kind of a one camera body and one lens shooter, and, yeah. and that body for you just has to do everything, everything. perfectly yes. without really thinking about it. And we're talking about a lot of these usability aspects mm -hmm. and, and how easy they are. How is that working for you? Yeah, I mean, the thing with me is that I don't understand technology. So, you know, we're all up here and I'm like, oh, I kind of get it, I, I get it, but I don't know the terms that well. And so for me, I need a camera that's going to shoot fast, that's gonna let me get in and out, especially because I only shoot at magic hour. So I only have about a 15 minute window to get my shots done. And I'm usually creating about three different images in that time. So I need to go as fast as possible I also need to know that this camera is going to be able to print as large as I want, because for my business, the larger the print, the more money you get for a print sale. I need to know that if I've underexposed something by accident drastically, which happens every day of my life pretty much, <laughs> that I can pull it up later and it's going to be okay. So this camera did that and I was really excited because I don't wanna have to think about how am I going to fix this later. I just want to think, how can I make this into whatever I want later mm -hmm. instead of fixing it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about a lot of the still capabilities of the camera. And, and Chris, you actually shot um, quite a bit of video. Yeah, so I, um, <clears throat> yeah, I paired up with uh, Renan Ozturk, a really uh, talented DP and director who's also a Sony artist and good friend of mine. Uh, he's in Utah. And we were kind of just like, hey, let's, let's go out on the road for a couple of days and shoot this in some adverse conditions. He's, he's definitely was a fan of this because it was like, let's go in an open cockpit plane at 12,000 feet. And I don't know if you've ever been in an experimental aircraft at 12,000 feet. It's cold, sub-zero. And you're taking a camera that in the past, the A7R2, the A7S, um, like I said, the Achilles heel <clears throat> has always been the battery. I mean, when these cameras get cold, they, they, it just zaps them of their energy. And I was shooting all day, sunrise, sunset, still had like 20 to 30% of battery life shooting video, shooting stills, mind blowing. I mean, 
the, the battery is, yes, it's larger, but it's also just its ability to operate under those conditions. It's not getting that, that life sap from cold weather. Um, you know, being able to shoot an S-Log3, amazing. Having totally flat picture profile to then later go and, and color correct however you want, that was amazing too. Um, also, one of the, the really the cool things that I think some people don't always understand is that when you shoot with a sensor like this, you know, that is 42 megapixels, and it's being super sampled to 4K, I mean, you're, you're packing in so much image quality into 4K, it's like, it's, it's a really incredible thing, the depth and the color recognition that we were seeing, you know, shooting sunset in the desert, you have these really rich, vibrant red rocks and all the, the cottonwoods are all yellow right now, like it, it was picking up all that with, with incredible accuracy. Um, it's, it's been an interesting one because I actually, you know, I know we're not talking about this lens, but the 24 to 105, I used it the whole week. I used it instead of my, you know, my other, you know, 24 to 70 f2.8s and other lenses I've gone to because when you need that range and you're sitting there with heavy vibration, this is a short, small package that really does well. And, you know, since the A7, I think it was the two that came along with the stabilized sensor, um, <clears throat> that was one of the things for me, shooting aerial photography and shooting motion that, that changed the game. People who haven't shot with a stabilized sensor, they, they simply don't know that experience. When you're in an open cockpit plane, the vibration is intense. I mean, it'll take your fillings out of your teeth, okay? And being able to put this thing down there, handheld and, and video, as we're moving along at you know, 80, 90 miles an hour, was a really incredible experience. I'm excited to share this video too, so yeah. You were talking about the oversampling, and Mark, I'd like to actually kick this over to you again. Can you explain the oversampling aspect of 4K video with this camera? Yeah, with uh, still cameras that are shooting video, we have, the, um, you know, we have higher resolution sensors. And uh, if the sensor read speed's fast enough, and if the processor's uh, fast enough, we can use those extra pixels uh, to create 4K frames, which are only eight megapixels, um, of much greater definition and clarity. Um, they're still eight megapixel frames because 4K is 4K, but if you're starting with 15, 20 million pixels to work with and you can use all of those pixels, you can create 4K of stunning realism just because you're starting with so much more data. But again, it's, it's processor intensive. I mean, you, you've got to have the processor and you've got to have the sensor to do it with. And when you put all of that together, it makes a magical combination, like Chris was saying, yeah. um, that uh, you know, dedicated video cameras um, struggle to do because and they're really not designed totally. for Totally. And the lag time, too, in previous cameras has always been a little bit of an issue. If you guys know what it's like to be doing it all yourself, which is not fun to do, going from video to still, to video to still. I mean, I was literally just going from custom function one, manual, back and forth, shooting and autofocusing that quickly. And it was, it was amazing to set the camera up that way and be able to know that this could do it all. There was no reaching for the A7S for my video camera, reaching for the A9 for the sports camera. It was like no compromise, you yeah. know? It, it and that's another thing that you can do with still cameras, particularly a mirrorless still camera like this. Um, focusing systems of still cameras are obviously a little bit more involved than, than uh, dedicated video cameras. And again, you got that tool, all of those advances in autofocus, IAF, all of that is in video as well. Mm -hmm. And that opens up the opportunity you know, in a way that's really exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brian, you and, and Mira both were early converts to Sony. <laughs> and you've had a, a lot of time to work with, with people at Sony and, and give feedback and everything. Yeah. There's a, a lot of, of kind of you guys in this camera. Is, is that fair well, to there's, say? There's, oh, wow, I would, that's really. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say it's a lot of us, but there's a lot of the user community out there. And yeah. I found since day one, Sony is the one camera company that listens to its users. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a great opportunity this, this year at Condo 1.0 to sit down with the engineers. And um, they're, they're always open to, to suggestions, but be able to sit down face to face and really plead my case for things like USB 3.1 type C connection for tethering. Mm -hmm. um, sort of stressing all the things we love from A9, like the bigger battery and dual card slots. You know, please put those in the next camera. And Sony did an amazing job of really listening to that feedback and incorporating a lot of that. And this is nothing new. It actually, this is, when people ask me what I love about Sony, it's, it's that connection with the engineers mm -hmm. um, where my very first experience with Sony was in 2008, uh, nine years ago this week, when they launched the Artisan program along with the Alpha 900. And the, uh, 
engineer who I worked with there to took the, take the feedback is actually here today, Rocky. You want to stand up and wave to everybody? <laughs> so Rocky was there, and I'm, you know, you're so used to camera companies coming up going, you shot with our new pro product, how amazing is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still remember his words today because yeah. I think this is the direction Sony's always been. He didn't ask for how brilliant it was. He said, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? What do we need to do next? Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that Sony hasn't come up with a ton of ideas that I never thought of, like the possibility of eye autofocus, mm -hmm. but it's that constant listening to the user to create the camera that meets our needs and then exceeds them in many cases. And meets them in a quicker amount of time than you would ever imagine. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I could never envision this releasing now. I mean, six months ago, I was just having my mind blown by the A9, and now all of a sudden we're here with this. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a step in a direction that I never really thought that would happen this quickly. That's a really cool aspect of it. I think the listening aspect has been the thing that has uh, made me value this partnership so much because I remember uh, 2007, so 10 years ago, Sony came to me and my life's work is about empowering women and uh, women photographers, the whole spectrum, and they wanted to work together on how can a camera make better sense for their creativity that comes out of the women, how we perceive technology, and, um, and not undermining it or dismissing it in any way, but really valuing that, that perspective. And so I remember also sitting with Rocky on some of those early versions, and how amazing to sit with uh, the engineers from Japan talk about how can this um, experience just be easier for the professional? And then the, you know, the down effect of then it becomes easier for the consumer to see the mirrorless technology, I felt like that was such a game changer for not only the pro, but all the moms out there that want to take photos of their kids. So Great. it's a huge thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much to all of you. You can see more from all the artisans here at alphauniverse.com. And all of you will be here during the event. Uh, please feel free to ask some questions. Thanks again. And with that, I'd like to kick Thank it back you, to Mike Fasula. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Wow, that was fascinating. How about another round of applause for our experts? Thank you all so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. So when I started out the event, I said that uh, we're going to deliver world's first, world's best, and world's fastest, and that Sony's focused on customer experience, innovation, and making consumers and customers say, wow. Hopefully, we have validated that today. If there are any questions, just remember what the panelists said, because they were just remarkable, and they were talking about their experiences. So let me leave you with one final thought. It's not about market share. It's not about who's number one or number two or beyond. It's really about listening to the experts, really understanding their pain points, and then using the power of Sony innovation in our engineers to resolve those pain points. And we will continue to do that, and you have our commitment that we'll continue to do that. So at this point, the event will conclude, and for those of you that are here in New York, uh, we'll have a hands-on demonstration right next door. For those of you that aren't here, there are two points for you. One, come visit us tomorrow at Photo Plus. Our exhibit is front and center, and we open at 10 a.m. And if you can't get there, remember, pre-sales start for everyone tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thank you all. Have a great day.